This teacher arranged for me to go out once a week and program a computer at a company in Sunnyvale. And I came to love programming. I want to do that for the rest of my life. And I set a goal. I am going to have a computer that I can type in a program and run it someday in my house. I told my dad that dream. And he said, well, these little mini computers would cost as much as a house. That's what he said. And I said, well, I'll live in an apartment. I always thought of myself as an engineer. In later life, after we started Apple, I looked at it and saw that I did the same things that an artist trying to make a piece of music so perfect, correcting it, correcting it, having all this talent and getting, knowing when something is so perfect that almost no other human could do it. And so then I realized I took engineering as an art. I was an artist at engineering. And I ran into a few others of those in the early days of Apple. About one out of 10 engineers, one out of 20 would be this artist type that everything they could show you was so perfect they would just show it off. They also were the ones that were the most humanist, that spoke the greatest words about how society should be affected by computers, how computers should treat a person, how you can make the human being more important than the technology. If the person has to think to remember how to do this and this and this step and those 20 steps on this computer, then the person has had to conform to the technology and the technology has been made the master. Through most of school, I had been an outsider. You might call it a nerd. You know, I was a little techie, so you might call it a geek. My group of people would be just weird guys that were interested in building an electronics project. And as a result, that made me, I think that made me very independent. You know, you can do something on your own, and you don't have to listen to everybody else. They can be wrong, and you can still go your own way. I learned that if you're, say you're writing a program, leave out a whole bunch of things that almost don't matter, but do the core of it very well. And sure, a lot of people would look at it and say, you don't have 500 things. No, I've only got 20 things, but they do all the job. And I got good at that. I took it as my goal to design a very simple, affordable computer, which I knew how to do, and give it to the others. And I did, I passed it out for free. No copyright notices, no nothing. And that's when a friend said this club started up, and it was the Homebrew Computer Club that had a lot of big social thinking combined with computers that were affordable. Then I, I finally got the tools one night, I got the time, I drafted, I designed everything, thought it out, went in, started plugging chips in a board, soldering every wire on, testing, looking on oscilloscopes, debugging, oh, oh my gosh, I made a mistake in the design, fix it over here and move a couple wires, put a new chip in, or oh my gosh, there's a problem here, oh, two wires must be touching each other, and I'd fix it, and I'd, I'd get the thing working. Steve Jobs wasn't going to the Homebrew Computer Club at first, and he st I started telling him about this interest, this computer I had built. He started coming to the club, and he saw there was interest in it. And I was passing out my schematics for free. I was passing out my code lessons for the little program I'd written for free, saying, build your own, you can build your own. And I thought that 50 people would build their own, and almost nobody did. So that was his idea, that we'd build this PC board for 20 bucks, sell it for 40, and call ourselves Apple Computer. To this day, yeah, the Apple II was 
Just an incredible design. And I didn't know if it would work, but the day that when I was building the Apple II and tested it and it worked, I called Steve over. I mean, we were shaking. It was, you know, the first one to say a computer can also be a game machine and it can be fun and it can be in the home. And we were just so lucky. None of the big companies thought that a little computer based on this little chip would be doing the useful tasks ever, so that they passed it by. I had learned all my stuff in computers by reading other people's journals. I never took a course, never read a book on computer design. I would look at their design, see what they had done, and I got it from others, so I wanted to pass that on. Apple had gotten to a point with maybe 100 engineers or so. We had a lot of structured type thinkers, a lot of, you know, and I'm more of the artistic, almost the right brain approach to engineering, but a lot of these left brainers, every little thing was documented on paper in advance. Like, how can you know what you're gonna do in advance? When I was creating things, it was like, I'm gonna try this chip and see if it works roughly, get an idea of what it can do. So I was outside of that structure, but it just wasn't something that I would fit into. I like little startups when people are talking rough ideas and you don't even know if it's possible or not. Let's go try it.